Yeah. Oh, Grugio! Yeah. Let's talk about yeah. the other benefits. Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> uh, it's really good to be here in Montreal. I've uh, been here for more than a month. Going back to so, uh, so, a bunch of us, we, we went on this journey where it all started with this new ISP that just uh, popped out in Malaysia. And they were one of the first uh, 4G providers in Malaysia. In the world. In the world. <laughs> so they say. And uh, luckily, we managed to get invites to the launching party. And we managed to get uh, free stuff, like a dongle and a MIFI device for free. So um, once we got it, we didn't actually stay for the event, so fuck that. We <laughs> <laughs> went down to the bar and we tore everything open and started uh, playing with it. So I think it was about roughly around 15 minutes. That's a big time, maybe. About 10 minutes, we managed to get free internet. And we realized that um, they were using a captive portal thing. Uh, but it only redirects HTTP traffic. So we only realized it when uh, our Skype was suddenly online and <laughs> we tried to tunnel everything out and it just worked. So free internet. <laughs> And uh, after that, uh, it kind of went bad for them because everyone was trying to use the service, but it was down, no one could register the website and everything. And they were blaming hackers for it. For some reason, we got blamed for it. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, never mind. So the next day, we got together and still played around with the, with the whole uh, internet and the device until we got a call from them asking us if we could drop by their secret uh, security center the layer. Yeah. <laughs> to, uh, to help them with a problem. So they had two problems. Uh, one was um, the free internet which we found. So they wanted us to tell them, uh, explain to them how we did it, which we did. <laughs> and later on they told us they were also under a DDoS attack and that no one could access the website. So we helped them figure it out for free. <laughs> and community service. Yeah, it's a community service. <laughs> so, <laughs> they didn't even give us fucking free internet after that. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and so we did them a favor. We never told anyone what actually happened. So <laughs> what actually happened was we realized that um, there was this specific host on in their internal network which was sending packets to their web servers, right? And we also realized the settings in their Apache config was, uh, I think it was TTL set to 900. Yeah, right, keep alive. Yeah, right. the keep alive oh, was set to 900. Whoops. And because of that particular machine was infected with malware, it kept going to that server and bringing everything down so no one else could access it. They lost themselves. So, yeah, so they lost themselves. <laughs> So anyway, uh, after that we played with the devices some more and um, we managed to jailbreak them and found a bunch of uh, zero-day vulnerabilities, well no, they're not zero-day anymore, but we managed to find some cool stuff and managed to figure out what you could do with those cool stuff, which is what uh, this talk will be about. So yeah, welcome to... <laughs> 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 I think I got that right. Uh, so this is when I presented APL. It was the two of us. It was me and uh, Biacho. So some quick stuff about me. I am the dude who used to run PHTV CTF. Um, I've been doing it since 2008 until this year. This year was my last. Uh, I work as a pen tester for uh, a big firm and when I'm not working, I usually tinker. Uh, Twitter account. And some stuff on Biacho. He's the dude who takes the pictures. <laughs> <laughs> not today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we also had another friend who really helped us a lot in this uh, little project. And he doesn't really want to be known, but so we'll just call him a random brown panda. <laughs> Uh, so some basic stuff on 4G uh, is uh, based, is based on all IP packet switch. Uh, peak data rate is about 100 megs high for mobility, uh, approximately one gig for uh, local wireless access, um, dynamically shared, scalable channel bandwidth, peak links spectrum, and everything else. Uh, this was the initial specs for 4G, and after that uh, it was agreed <laughs> that LTE and WiMAX is also 4G. So this is 
the device that we've been playing with. Um, we call it the huddle, which is what the ISP calls it. So it's called the S4G huddle. But initially it was by this company called Infomark, a Korean-based company, and they developed it. Uh, so it's an IMWC 610W. It's a portable wiring max to Wi-Fi router, uh, fully compatible wiring max. Uh, allows Wi-Fi devices up to four, but you could actually hack it, and uh, we've tried until nine before ten kind of dies. <laughs> uh, it supports USB tethering uh, and it's ARM-based, and it also runs Linux. So, some initially someone else did find bugs uh, on the same hardware, so it was uh, for the clear IE spot, same device. Uh, so the vulnerability was uh, the CVE 2010 4507. It was discovered by Matthew Jakubowski or Jaku from Trust Wave Spider Labs, and his attacks were more to CSRF. And we tried his uh, the vulnerabilities that he found, and we realized that um, only two of them worked, which was uh, to enable Telnet and also to download files off the device. Uh, everything else didn't work. And this is uh, his proof of concept for enable enabling Telnet. And this is how we got files off the device. So uh, we managed to get Telnet, but we couldn't log in because we don't have the password and we can't res reset it. And none of the other vulnerabilities work. So what we did next was we started downloading all the common files we could find on Linux, especially embedded devices and uh, we started doing some analysis on it, especially the CGIs, which handles uh, the authorization and stuff like that. And later on, uh, about a day or two, I think, we managed to jailbreak it. So we came up with uh, the first um, exploit of QC, which uh, is, uh, I think it was a command injection through the NTP settings. So what we did was we, we injected password-d, which uh, removes the root password, and we turned it into it as root. So uh, a few other bugs that we found was command injection in the DMZ settings, uh, command injection in the port forwarding settings, and the remote management settings. So uh, we I think we had about five uh, bugs. Um, three, uh, this, are the three, this is the tree, and the other one was the NTP. Uh, there's also another one where we think you could uh, inject by uploading, by appending the command to a file. But the thing is, you have to, it's a firmware upgrade uh, function. So none of us were willing enough to test it because <laughs> it might break. And the device is fucking expensive. It's about 400, uh, 400 ringgit, which is about uh, 100 euros. So fuck that. Uh, so this is uh, the vulnerability for the DMZ settings. Uh, basically, you just inject uh, your commands to the host IP uh, parameter. So, what this does is it injects um, a string to a file called XYZ in the temp directory. Uh, and this is how I quickly did it, we're using verb. And that is the result. <coughs> so, it, the same goes for the other two. Um, this one requires injection to the add host. IP address, uh, verb, and there you go. <laughs> and third one is uh, injection at the remote access port parameter. <laughs> so what's cool is being an embedded device, it runs as root, so you have total control over it. Um, so after we found vulnerabilities, we were thinking what else we could do with it. Um, and since now we have root, you know, what if we could roll out our own custom firmware? So you could do, you could uh, pretty much uh, configure it the way you like it. You know, it doesn't have to be wireless maximum at four. You could set it to nine or ten, stuff like that. Um, so <coughs> it was a bit tricky at first because um, we realized that if you jailbreak the device, uh, the ISP would uh, silently push firmware upgrade. Uh, and it'll reset everything and you kind of lose your jailbreak capabilities. So um, what we did was, the first thing we did was uh, disable the over-the-air firmware update feature and there are 
the, yeah, there are just this one file called upgrade.config, uh, where you have to either delete or alter the auto upgrade URL or auto upgrade URL ext1 parameter to something else. So I just set it to fuck you. And it. <laughs> <laughs> Were you able to download the image by, by yourself? Uh, yeah, you could. And do uh, reverse engineering on it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So uh, this is the firmware that we were working on, um, it, but there was actually uh, two versions of uh, firmware that we had. One was from the Clear Eyes bot, which is still hackable, and this is the this is the firmware that we had, which uh, kind of had some changes to the firmware. But we'll get to that later on. Uh, so uh, how I what I did to reverse the firmware was uh, found this really cool tool from. Uh, OZ Paul D, which is called firmware tool, and it is specifically for this specific firmware, so it extracts everything out. So when it extracts the uh, two files, uh, the firmware input effects, uh, the kernel file, and root effects, and the Wi-Fi firmware. Uh, so this is the steps to um, extract the firmware out. Um, you see, that you run the firmware tool, and then uh, what you have to do is you have to convert it because it's a GFS image. And it's in, uh, it's in, I think it's in Real Indian. So you have to convert it to a big Indian in order to work it. And you have to also uh, insert the necessary modules for JFFS and uh, block characters and stuff like that. Uh, and then we ran into problems. So initially I was talking about um, how there were two versions of firmware. So we noticed by comparing the two firmware, we noticed that uh, the firmware we had, uh, there was uh, an extra, uh, I think it was 64, 64 bytes of data at the end. So what sucks about that is uh, we managed to customize the other firmware which, which didn't have the 64 bytes, and you could just flash it and it worked. But with the new one, we realized that even if you flash it, uh, it, it, it won't actually accept the firmware because we think it's part of a signature. So we did some testing and we realized that uh, out of the 64, only uh, 40 bytes matter. If, if you change the others, uh, you can still load the firmware, no problem, but it's only those 40 bytes. So, so far we haven't actually managed to figure out what they are. And that's the problem because you know, the Flash program will, will not allow flashing up all the software, uh, all the firmware. So if you had uh, firmware 2.0 on the device, you can flash it to 1.5. Uh, it also keeps track of the firmware uh, in a table called MD5 uh, checksums. Uh, it also refers to a file called version .svn and also the 64 bytes. So initially you could you could uh, tamper with all the three, the first three, without any problems, but with our firmware we had the 64 bytes, which even if you do tamper with it, it won't still it won't upload, it won't uh, accept the firmware. So which is where we are stuck now. So, using what we have right now, uh, we realized you could pull off really a bunch of cool stuff with it. Uh, like, for example, if you combine the zero day with uh, CSRF and some social engineering, you could do a lot of things. Uh, another, a few other stuff you could do is uh, steal accounts, which we, we've done. And, you know, I mean, for testing, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> myself. So, you could uh, theoretically start a botnet using it, though I'm not sure if you know, 20,000 devices is big, but uh, interestingly, you could, you could also access the, the client's machine, so if you have four people connected to the device, you could, you could launch an attack remotely from the internet to their machine uh, by combining the zero day with uh, some, some uh, scripting. The uh, cool thing is you could redirect traffic, which is, uh, we didn't test for it, but in theory it should work, and that has to be some other cool stuff too. So. For hijacking accounts, we came up with this theory uh, like, what if uh, someone send you a link and you click on it and you don't realize it but you, your device gets phoned. So we did a POC where we, uh, I wrote a, P, a PHP script which actually executes the zero day and masquerades it as a PNG. And if you look at the code, uh, the exploit is there. If you look where I'm actually downloading a shell, a shell script to the device and then uh, jailbreaking it and then stealing the account. <laughs> <laughs>
And this is what I get in my cookie jar, or my account jar. So, yeah, I chose accounts, no one else is. <laughs> uh, this is um, the script that the device downloads, so basically the, uh, the payload in the HTML uh, tells the, the device to download this script right here, and this script will execute and does all that. So uh, what I did was grab for the password and identity is actually the username, then pass it back as a GET request to uh, my server. Uh, next thing is how we could attack people behind the device. So this is the, this MAP uh, scan is what it looks like before before you actually launch the exploit. So this is all this is the results from the device itself. And then you do this again. Uh, so this is actually quite simple because what I did was um, I just set the DMZ setting to yes and then pointed it to an IP. Um, so another test that I did was how to dynamically find the correct IP address because by doing this you have to initially know the IP address of the target. So you, what, what you could do is you could inject in the same way as how I stole accounts, you could uh, get it to download a shell script which actually checks for the checks the ARP table and then finds the, uh, the IP from there. <coughs> and this is the IMAP scan after the, the payload. So you could see that, uh, you could totally see the Windows machine. So uh, I have a video demo if you guys want to see it. It's um, basically how you could hijack someone's bank account using the zero days. Sure. Uh, so initially when oh, okay. so initially when I showed this video in KL, I had to kind of censor it. But I guess I don't have to do so here. Oh, wait. Excuse. Thanks. <laughs> Not new, no. I like the, uh, the naming of the slides. I need to be uh, the second the box with the slide. Okay. So what uh, I tried to do was um, to change the DNS records on the device itself. So what if you could point, uh, like uh, we have an uh, online banking website called maybanktoyou.com.my. So what if you could point Maybank to you? to your own server and you have a big login page and everything so you need as, as many things as enough to steal accounts and not get busted for it so, you know, the, so the user doesn't know so uh, that is initially the IP addresses of the, the DNS servers that, that's on the device This is the original IP address of maybank to you on the line. This is the actual mailbank2.com. To be honest, though, it looks kind of sucky because like all the graphics are like it's not properly there. They have this promotion going on. Free tickets. Who <laughs> likes to throw inside? I already think I'm hacked by God. That's why it's a family. So just to prove that you can actually do this without being authenticated to the device.
if you check out the DNS IP address, it's been changed to mm -hmm. a different server. So this was the original IP address, so what I did was I changed the primary DNS to uh, my own. And the secondary DNS remains the same. So I'm going to forward this a bit. So here I'm going to show that when you ping Maybank to you, it's actually a different IP address now, which is the server that belongs to you. Uh, it took a while for the DNS to actually resolve, so I'm just going to... Yeah. <laughs> so you realize that. Yeah. It's a different IP address. So initially, the IP address of made back to you was 202.162.17.68. And then through the, through the exploit, we managed to change it to something else. And if, you, if we, go, we actually go to the Maybank website, you actually see a Maybank login page. Just pretty much the same, except it looks better. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, just to prove that this is uh, a fake Maybank account, uh, Maybank website, so what I did was uh, quickly place a text file saying that this is fake. <laughs> <laughs> so, yep. got your bank account. Yeah. <laughs> so. So yeah, that was, that's like one of the stuff you could do with the series. Um, so we, we got us thinking of like how you could do this in real world, like you know, what would happen here. How easy would it be to actually exploit this? So we did a little experiment. Borderline legal. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were really, really curious to know like, what would come up and stuff like that. So here's the story of the girl. Um, her name is uh, Riz Lapid. I think she's kind of okay. Ready and stuff like that. So we created a, a fake Twitter account. Um, we created the persona and everything. And populated the account so it doesn't really look fake. And then we started to interact with the ISP. So uh, I tweeted to them saying that if there is uh, a binding contract if I subscribe to your service. Right? So uh, after a few minutes, uh, they replied saying thanks for the interest, um, there are no contact. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, I hope there are any contact. <laughs> I bet that's what he was thinking, you know, the guy who tried it. Like, yeah, there'll be contact. <laughs> but yeah, the, no contract involved when you sign up for yes for g And then he gave me a link for more information. Uh, so I replied, and I told them, cool, thinking of getting yes for you tomorrow. And I actually did it, I waited for like a few more days, it's you know, very hard to get. <laughs> <laughs> so they said thank you for supporting us, and stuff like that. So I uh, think about five days later, uh, I, actually, I tweeted that I bought the device. And I did a speed test, and this link here is my results. So, which is ever this year, you should get it. I tweeted it. And they retweeted it. <laughs> so, um, the other funny thing is, uh, you see that retweet by Wingblock guy? He's, I think, we, is he? I'm not sure, but we think he might be like a top guy. In he guys. is, he is <laughs> not a top guy, but he's not the CSO. Yeah, he's a top guy. So that's kind of funny. So we know that if you were actually to do this, it would definitely work. Yeah. So <laughs> he's already done. Uh, so I don't know. after that, um, we're gonna stop working on uh, it. But uh, I saw this. <laughs> I saw this. Uh, I was reading this article on this website. Someone tweeted and. 
yeah, he was talking about the pineapple Wi-Fi, which I think is a really cool device. It's like a mobile uh, room EAP where it's battery operated, you can just bring it around. And I want to, but uh, it was kind of expensive and you have to ship to Malaysia and everything and they were also out of it. So uh, it got me thinking, you know, like what if I could use the same device, the, the huddle, and turn it into somewhat the same as a pineapple Wi-Fi, except with less functionality, but just enough to do what I wanted to do, which is to fish for accounts. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> so I actually managed to do it, and uh, surprisingly, it was very, very easy. Um, and it's cool because it's smaller than the pineapple Wi-Fi. It fits in your pocket, and um, it's, uh, I think the battery lasts for like five hours. And so you could like you have you technically have a rogue AP in your pocket. You could just be walking around. Someone would use it. Go to Facebook or whatever. Go to your fake login website and pop, you get an account. So <laughs> what I did was I, I I think I created three fake logins, which was Gmail, PayPal, and Facebook, and I placed the the pages inside the device itself, so it doesn't need internet. And I used uh, three things, which was DNS mask to do uh, DNS stuff, uh, THTPD, which is the web server, and uh, a CGI script to actually save the credentials. So this is supposedly Facebook account, but if you think it, it's actually the device. Um, <laughs> so as long as um, your, your laptop or your phone or whatever, your, as long as your network settings is default, meaning it will use the device's DNS settings, uh, so it will print Facebook or whatever website you do to the device and this is actually the fake login page on the device itself uh, and this is uh, the CGI script that I use which is just a few lines it's freaking simple and uh, it saves uh, the credentials to a text file on the device itself and this is uh, a test that I did to show that it actually it could you know capture the accounts so <laughs> so uh, yeah, this is like one of the cool stuff you can do, and um, there was also this other test that I wanted to do, but I didn't really have, I didn't really come to doing it. Is what if you could reroute traffic from the device to an external server, pass it through, you know, sniff it first, and then pass it back, and that would be kind of cool, you know. So. I've taken the time to draw this very sophisticated. <laughs> <laughs> so this is how uh, this is how a standard uh, connection would be if you serve, if you were to serve uh, the internet. So it goes to the internet and to Facebook, or Gmail, or Twitter. That looks like a bird, right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and so what if you could redirect it to your <laughs> server? So, Instead of going straight to the website, I mean, if you combine, I mean, it's a, it's a mobile device, it's a network device, it has IP tables on it, you could do a lot of stuff with it. So you could redirect traffic to your own server, sniff it and pass it to the website and pass it back, do a, a man in the middle of that, but on the internet. That would be really cool, right? So this is one of the stuff that I do want to do, but I will not actually come to doing it yet, but I'll do it and I'll let you guys know if it works. Um, so I think that's pretty much it. Uh, do you guys have any questions? Or stop. No. No questions. Where's the CD? This is from JL. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, um, yeah. I didn't really edit my slides at all. But I work really hard on the diagram. <laughs> <laughs> So, thank you.